This birding adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. On this week's episode of Nikon's Birding Adventures TV, we're in Cochise County in southeastern Arizona. This is arguably the premier birding site in all of North America. This county is the size of the entire state of Connecticut and holds well over 500 species of birds, making it one of the most fantastic birding locations in all of North America. This week, we're going in quest of some of the specialty birds of this region, and we're also going to take in some of the incredible scenery. Join us this week as we go in quest of our golden bird, the Gould's Turkey. Let's go birding. Cochise County in southern Arizona is often referred to as the land of legends. Not only is Cochise County a place where you can find out about Tombstone and the old American West, but it also happens to have some of the most fantastic scenery in all of North America. Combine this with some of the very best birding in North America and you have a must visit destination to put on your birding bucket list. The Wingsover Wilcox Birding and Nature Festival is the perfect opportunity to see all of the winter migrants that visit the area and also to see some of the resident wildlife and natural wonders of southeastern Arizona. The festival provides opportunities to explore nature through tours on photography, geology, history, botany, agriculture and of course the wonderful sandhill cranes and other birds of the area. Arguably the single best birding location in the Sulphur Springs area is the large wastewater pond just outside the town of Wilcox. This pond has been named Cochise Lake and it's an excellent spot for wintering waterfowl. Up to 10 species of duck can be seen here on any given morning. Birds like northern shovelers, ruddy ducks, American widgeon and green winged teal. If you spend a significant amount of time during winter at the wastewater treatment ponds here, you're more than likely to see the odd bald eagle come in and put up the ducks and it's quite a spectacle seeing thousands of ducks take to the air with the bald eagle in hot pursuit hoping for an easy meal. This is an excellent example of how you can turn a wastewater treatment area into a phenomenal birding location. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by Cochise County, Arizona, land of legends. There's a new sheriff in Cochise County, and his name is James Curry. And from now on, birding is mandatory across the whole county. Let's go birding. <laughs> So this was the jail tree, right? Correct, this is the jail tree. This is where they tied the prisoners. They didn't have a regular jail, so they would come down here, tie them, the cable went across the wash and it served as a bathroom. And they would tie them by their uh, right hand 
because the kids would come down up here and throw rocks at the prisoners. So they, they worked good until they got somebody that was a left-hander, and a left-hander was able to throw the rocks back at the kids. <laughs> so we would run back up on the hill. But this is the, the you can see the chain has grown into the tree. It was getting so rowdy they had to do something. And the Texas Rangers, the sheriffs came in, and then they had them here, but then they decided to make the permanent jail up on top up there. Things got so rowdy that they needed a permanent jail. A permanent huh? jail to hold them. Well, this is the wild, wild west, a place where you can enjoy fantastic birds, but also a place steeped in amazing American history. And Gleason is just one example of that history here in Cochise County. just been playing the call of scaled quail. And we've just had a covey flush out from the grassland. A harrier flew over and they flew off into the grassland over here and I've just played the call and I've got one of them that's just popped up right up on top of this little cactus sitting in the open. Really good shot. It's also called the cotton top quail because of the crest on top of the head which gives it its name, the cotton top, and then the regular name for it is scaled quail on account of the beautiful feather patterning on the breast and the belly. What a stunning bird, the scaled quail. Quite a common bird of the grasslands and shrublands of the southwestern part of the United States. In areas where scaled quail and gambles quail coexist, the gambles quail tend to prefer much denser, shrubbier brush, and the scaled quails tend to be more in the open. Wow, look at that scaled quail running now. There he goes, running, running, running. It's running across the road. Beautiful. He's just stopped to have a look back at us. You can hear that amazing call of the scaled quail. It's a very common call of the desert shrublands and desert grasslands of the southwest. A great bird, the scaled quail. That Harrier's gonna rouse them. Oh, there they're flying. Look at that. Wow. The whole cubby just took off. Northern Harrier came in and roused the whole lot up. Cochise Stronghold is located in the Dragoon Mountains at about 5,000 feet. This beautiful area consists of ramparts of sheer cliffs and granite domes and stunning woodland. And it was once the home of the great Apache chief Cochise and his people. We're going to go up and explore the bird life of this incredibly scenic spot. We've got a flock of about 12 western bluebirds. These are stunning birds with their bright blue backs and nice rusty orange on the front and the breast. And they're feeding on berries in this tree here, just pecking each individual berry and eating them. It really is one of the iconic birds of the west. Stunningly beautiful, closely related to the eastern bluebird from the eastern United States. And then there's a third species found in the United States as well, which is the mountain bluebird. One of the warbler species with unsurpassed beauty is undoubtedly the painted redstart. This is a bird which comes just into the United States along the borderlands of Arizona, and it lives in the Sunsites Mountains. It's mostly a bird of the summer, but occasionally birds will overwinter. And this painted red start flits around. It's got this very characteristic flitting with these white edges to the tail feathers as it flits around catching insects. And it's believed that those white 
tail feathers actually flush insects as they're hunting. And it's quite an unusual name, red start, because they're actually more commonly known in the neotropics as white starts. And this is the only member of its genus to come into the United States. Wow. There are very few warblers that are as beautiful as the painted red start, without a doubt. So we had scaled quail quite close to Wilcox. We're now in the Kochi Stronghold Mountains and we've got a lovely gambles quail singing on top of a bush. These are beautiful quails, very similar to the California quail in appearance. They've got these beautiful black top knots on top of their heads, little sort of crest that sticks out. This bird's just singing away on top of the bush here. Gambles quail generally prefer thicker, more shrubby vegetation than the similar scaled quail. Where they're found in similar habitats, you want to generally look for the scaled quail in more open areas. What a beautiful bird. Gambles quail right here in the Kochi Stronghold Mountains. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by the Wings Over Wilcox Birding and Nature Festival. And by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. Wings over Wilcox is one of the funnest things we do all year. We get to take people out and see these magnificent animals as well as the beautiful scenery. And it's a lot of fun. We get people from all over the world. And what a great adventure for us, you know, get to share the wonderful things of, of Cochise County. So this year is our 24th year. So we're coming up on our silver anniversary. It's pretty exciting, you know, 25 years of a festival. It's a great partnership with Arizona Game and Fish. They've done so much with us. So come to Cochise County all year long. You know, we have some fantastic thing. Not only is the birding great, you can find Old West history. We have pistachio, some great Arizona wine. You can just come and relax, or you can go out on a great hike and come back and relax and see a sunset that you won't believe. It's amazing how quickly things can change in southeastern Arizona. Just yesterday, it was 75 degrees, balmy and hot, and today it's below freezing. It's about 32 degrees here, and we're at the top of Masai Point, and there's snow in Arizona. Just yesterday, we had these beautiful vistas, of the rock formations and Cochise's head. Today we come up here and what a difference. With these frigid conditions up high, I think we might need to go down a little bit further to lower elevations to look for birds. Driving in southeastern Arizona and looking for roadrunners is quite a daunting task. It's not difficult to find them. I mean, they are everywhere. You see them on the side of the road, and then you try to stop the vehicle and you try and film them, and they run straight into a hedge and disappear. So we've employed a different tactic here. We're lying down, we've seen a roadrunner, we're lying down and we're just waiting in the grass for one to get a little bit more accustomed, a little bit more okay with us, and see what happens. These roadrunners are getting way more accustomed with us now, and they're seem to be okay with our presence. There's one coming across the road now. He's doing this, look at that weird behavior. He's kind of like bobbing, moving, he's cocking his tail up and down. Very strange behavior. I think he can see me. He's kind of like looking at me. These are such incredibly comical birds. The way that they walk and the way that they behave when they go looking for food. You can see that one sort of scurrying around, pick something up. They'll turn over rocks and they'll look into vegetation trying to find any kind of thing that they can overpower, whether it's a, a baby bird or a, a rodent. They're particularly fond of tarantulas and spiders, so they'll grab those big tarantulas and they'll tear them apart and eat them. Very, very active birds, even in the hot sun, you'll see them running around looking for food. These roadrunners are such amazing birds and they have a very special place in Native American culture and legends. These birds have been revered for their courage and their strength and their speed. These roadrunners are superbly adapted to living in the harsh conditions of the southwestern deserts. 
Like many types of seabirds, they excrete a highly concentrated salt substance from their eyes, which uses up a lot less water than excreting the salt through your kidneys or the urinary tract. Greater roadrunners seem almost immune to eating venomous creatures. You know, they'll eat things like lizards and scorpions and tarantulas and spiders with very little ill effect. They are quite careful to swallow horned lizards head first though, with the horns pointed away from their vital organs. True to its name, the greater roadrunner can often be found racing along dry riverbeds or rural roadsides, hunting for insects, animals, and its venomous prey that it looks for. And it's this kind of behavior which was the inspiration for the Warner Brothers cartoon, The Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote. Here at Rock Jumper, we deal in the spectacular, from the iconic animals of Africa, to the bizarre birds of paradise in New Guinea, to the beaches of Brazil, to the grand state of Alaska. We help you reach your dream destinations. With over 300 tours to over 100 countries, Rock Jumper leads the pack in adventure travel, and we want to travel with you. We also specialize in private tours. If you have a group of friends you're traveling with, or want to see the seven natural wonders of the world with your family, contact us today. Our friendly, fun, professional guides excel in producing riveting wildlife experiences. That's why Rock Jumper's birding tours and wildlife safaris are so popular. And we offer dazzling photographic tours and unique cultural trips too. Roll with Rock Jumper and see the world. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917. And by Hobie Mirage Drive Kayaks. Enjoy nature effortlessly. And sponsored in part by Manfrotto, complete solutions for photographers and videographers. Visit manfrotto.us. It's early morning and we're in the foothills of the Chiricahua Mountains and our quest this morning is the Gould's Turkey. I'm here with Scott from the NWTF and we've just found some very fresh Gould's Turkey tracks in the dirt here. Scott, these look pretty fresh, huh? They were. They were just made a few minutes ago, maybe 10 or 15 minutes ago. Most of them are the juveniles tracks, but this one right here and another one right over in here are larger than the rest. You can see it's almost an inch longer than all these others, and that was probably the flock female, the one that gave birth to all these smaller turkeys. Well, let's go and follow these tracks and hopefully we'll come up on this flock of Gould's turkeys. James, here we go. Some turkey tracks, real nice mature bird. They use this waterway, this stream bed, as a, a way to transport, and it's essential for them to have water so that they can drink uh, and, and hydrate themselves. So this is a nice big tom track here? Uh, it looks like it's a mature hen. Okay, mature hen. It's not quite big enough for a tom. Well, that's a good sign. We've got water in the creek. We do. We've got fresh tracks. Out here in the desert, there's very few locations for water. And so, you know, we come looking for the turkeys wherever we've got running water. And that's usually what we find is turkeys near the water. subspecies in the United States and 
there's only about 2,500 to 3,000 of them. Historically, they were the sustenance for the early settlers back in the 1700s in this area. Wow, well, we started walking through the woodland and we had uh, what we thought was a flock of about 20 birds and they started doing this putt putt call and then out of nowhere, more birds just started materializing and coming through the woodland and we ended up with a flock of what, about 70 Goulds turkeys? That's correct, right. Really special, isn't it? It is, it's something to see. Uh, you typically don't see this many Goulds turkeys in one place. There's probably three mature hens back here behind them all and these are probably the broods, two broods per hen, about a dozen of them in each brood. So this is probably all three hens broods all together trying to survive the winter. Great. And Scott, tell us about the reintroduction program of Gould's turkeys in the United States, especially this flock, because right now we're in the Chiricahuas, right? That's correct. The Chiricahuas, by the way, means turkey in Apache. And these Goulds, we brought them here, the National Wild Turkey Federation, about 25 years ago. They were extirpated from the United States, and we got together with the Mexican government, bought 50 of them, and with game and fish, built a facility here to be able to watch them with a veterinarian full time, then released them on the mountain ranges here that we call the Sky Islands. About 10 of them are released over here and about 40 of them were released in the Santa Rita Mountains. And now it's grown to 2,500 to 3,000 in only 20 years. So this is a pretty special sighting for birders and for hunters to be able to see Gould's turkey in the United States again. Right, I've run into birders that are in their 80s and have still not seen one, and I've taken them to see it. And they're, they were in tears that they were able to see one because they're so difficult to find. Very privileged to be able to see Gould's turkeys again in the United States after being extirpated about 100 years ago. And now, thankfully, thanks to the NWTF and other conservation organizations, we're able to view these turkeys again. Awesome stuff. Our golden bird, the Gould's turkey, the hardest of all the five subspecies of turkeys to see in North America. Awesome, good job. Thanks, Thank Scott. Thank that was you. great taking us to those birds. Thank you. See you next week. Never been before